Welcome back to the Forensics Detailing Channel. Today we're talking video cameras, guys, vlogging cameras, uh, YouTube cameras. <laughs> okay, this camera here is a Canon M50. For the last five years, I've been using a Canon 750D, a very cheap entry DSLR camera. That, you know, the DSLR obviously has the, the mirror in the way of the lens to the viewfinder, and then the mirror opens up and the light goes through onto the onto the um the sensor and that's how you take the photo these new mirrorless cameras don't have that kind of flip hinging lens everything goes straight through onto the sensor and when what you see i think when you look through the viewfinder is that what's actually being picked up on the sensor it's a slightly different kind of tech um and you tell me what the benefits of that that is the first thing is guys i'm a technophobic youtuber when it comes to cameras very poor camera skills um and I want to talk about why I think this M50 might be one of the best vlogging cameras that you can get, with the caveat that you're dealing with someone with poor experience and stuff like that. So take that into consideration. Why did I buy this camera, first of all? Well, it was time to upgrade, guys, from the 750. The first thing is, if you watch my channel, I have to use autofocus generally, guys. If I set manual focus, a lot of times you don't get a crisp shot. Um, and then you've got all of that footage that's slightly out of focus and it bugs you. Uh, it's hard to set um, manual focus with tiny little viewfinders. So you have to use autofocus. The autofocus on the 750D roamed all over the place. This camera, first of all, has fantastic autofocus that will maintain its kind of lock. It has this dual mechanism that's well known, you know. Um, so reliable autofocus and none of that wandering around, which looks horrible. Next thing is, guys, this camera, the form of the camera, it's much smaller. Let's just take that little microphone out. It's much smaller and um, more compact than the full DSLR camera, so much more suitable for just carrying around. You're not going to need this light most of the time, so you're literally going to be carrying around that camera maybe on a strap um, or a little mini tripod or a full-size tripod. Much lighter, much more gimbal-friendly as well if you want to put it on a gimbal. Um, much better to be on a smaller lightweight tripod. The next thing with this camera, guys, on the bigger DSLR cam cannons, some of the older ones, if you step back a few years, there's an audio bug where if you plug in external microphones and use the automatic video section, the preamps on the cannons create an audio kind of hiss, a level problem. And so you have to use them in um, manual mode where you set your dB up, up 20 on these on the external road microphones and put in the noise gate setting. But you get a kind of slightly boomy audio with that and not an ideal. So you want a microphone that can work with these that works on the auto setting and automatically discovers the audio. And the and you can put you can plug an external mic straight into this. I'm just using this little Sarmonix, I think it's called one. I've just ordered a Video Pro, a Rode Video Pro Micro, which will sit on the top. Um, so it's out, so it's not blocking the viewfinder. Um, and you can use it in audio mode and you won't get the audio boom hissing issues that you get with some of those older generation DSLRs. I don't know if that's been, if that's been fixed or not. Next one, this camera has inbuilt image stabilization rather than lens, you know, image stabilization. Lens, my Canon 750D only had lens image stabilization which was poor in my opinion. So you really had to use that camera static um, and, you, and you had to really control when you're moving it. If you go around too quickly, you could tell it was struggling to keep that image stable. It just didn't work very well. So this has inbuilt stabilization within the camera. So it obviously zooms in a little bit more so you get a slightly tighter uh, frame, if you like, and it uses the excess that it cuts off to to work around so that's how it does the stabilization which is sort of software stabilization which is very effective and that's what the gopro does i think it's better than the the lens stabilization what i see next thing this canon does shoot 4k i'm not going to be using 4k though but you might be interested in that <clears throat> i'll be shooting it in 1080p but it has 50 or 60 frames per second depending on whether you use pal or ntsc um, which is important so you can go up to 50 but then it also has this very high frame rate mode like the super slow-mo mode where you can record in 120 up to 120 if you're in NTSC um, and that allows you to ca capture 
um, that allows you to capture slow motion footage in HD 720p I believe sorry 720p when you're running at 120 and you can just set it in that mode reasonably quickly from the menu and you don't have to it's not a normal speed 120 frames per second file it's already slowed down which is handy so you can just shoot in slow-mo and plonk that straight into your editor and have really good looking slow-mo footage and that's how the when I was shooting the video recently over at Fresh Layers Mike the guy there that does the PPF and vinyl was using this camera, sent me loads of footage from it. Not this exact one, but you know, the same model. And his footage looked amazing and mine looked awful. And I thought, I've got to get me, got to get me one of these. This camera also has time-lapse function, which is really useful for, for uh, you know, YouTubers and vloggers. So slow motion and time-lapse are two things that you want in your cameras. Um, okay. It also has this flip screen, which is really important that you can set, you know, it's just, this is just how you should do flip screen. So you can get all of the different views that you want and you can see what's going on when you're doing selfies or even when you're doing dialogue piece to camera. You can just make sure it's a sanity check. You've got a good frame, you know, you, you framed the shot right. It's also got external microphone um, port, which some, some of these cameras don't always have. Um, so you've got to check that it has external microphone port. What else does it also have that's really important? Oh my goodness, I didn't write it on my list and it was in my brain and now it's just dropped out of my brain. Oh yes, this has one touch wireless transfer. So I've installed the Canon utility on my PC, just to go and download it, it's on there, bang. You connect this, set this up to connect to your wireless network. Always fun and games, you want to type in that awkward password on these little menus. Once you've set it up once, that's it, it's done. I press that button, it connects to my wireless network and it dumps all of the files that are on there into a folder on my PC where I do all my editing and it's all ready to go and that is fantastic. So no, whenever I took my old camera in, I've got to pop those little plastic hatches off, get the USB, plug it in, make sure I don't drop it and yank the USB and the cables and there's a risk when you're handling that camera all the time that you just damage things, even if you just damage and wear out the little rubber flap. So it's much better. All cameras really nowadays should have a wireless file transfer utility, and this does. Um, and finally, guys, the image quality that this, this M50 camera takes is really, really superb. A massive step up from the image quality of the, um, the DSLR. In a way, in a way, I mean, the DSLR is still capable of taking um, great shots, you know, but you need to know a little bit more about it. The automatic modes, in this tend to give you, and the sensor tend to give you a higher quality default image than just taking the, my previous DSLR and whacking it in auto mode and taking footage. Finally, I stick with Canon because I like their software system. And there's a good software system that comes with this that I've literally not read the manual yet. I just turn the camera on and all the things that I need to be able to do, I kind of I kind of understand. There's a few things I'm not too sure about. There's not that many buttons to play around with on this. It's quite simple though, guys. Um, you've got all your camera modes and you've got all your kind of video modes. You can go and view all your footage by pressing the play button and looking at all your stuff and deleting files. You can switch between autofocus and manual focus with that button. You can just press the menu button if you want to change all your settings, set auto white balance, picking different, um, you know, formats if you want, you know, 1080p or 720p, all the stuff you want. And it's also got preset, loads of preset picture options if you're shooting landscape, we're shooting sports, fast action stuff, shooting cars, which are quite useful if you're not clever enough to set all of those things manually. And I'm not, not without Googling it. <laughs> Finally, one thing I haven't also mentioned is that this little compact mirrorless camera has detachable lenses and it comes with a seven uh, with a 15 millimeter to 45 millimeter lens which gives you a good um, range of kind of zoom and wideness 15 mil will give you quite a wide shot so it's just about usable in this garage you could argue you want it even wider but but it's a good range you could do everything with that range so you don't need to go looking for lenses the kit lens i'm sure there's better lenses out there but i find the kit lens is quite decent and that really is all probably i need 
uh, if you're into photography then you're probably going to want to get more prime lenses but for video and vlogging and stuff like that i think the kit lens is ideal um that's it guys there is one problem if you're a camera expert let me know the problem i've got is my standard tripod which is in here you can see it sitting there just, what is that that's a vel bomb has this plate on it okay that clips i don't know what this oh jesus i don't know what the standard for that plate is called that clips into there and you can quick release it so historically on my old camera i'd always have the plate attached to the camera so i can just pop it on the pop the camera on the big on the big tripod, take the camera off the big tripod. Problem is if I t tie this plate in, screw this plate into there, it covers the battery hatch. You can't open the battery and swap the batteries and you're forever having to do that on cameras. So I don't want to keep constantly unscrewing every sort of couple of hours or every hour, putting a new battery and screwing the thing back on. I'll end up dropping the camera and stuff like that. So I'm looking for some sort of quick release adapter that I can use with this or I would literally need to saw a big chunk of this off so it doesn't interfere with that there must be something out there and I'm searching and I know I can see there's a few channels that have talked about this as a, as a problem but there's no solution as far as I know for my plate system so like, I know you've got Manfrotto plates Manfrotto Manfrotto and you've got S what's it called Swiss Iraq or something like that plates there's two main quality plates this is all new to me so let me know if you know of any solution for a plate system quick release plate system that I can use on this camera to solve that issue with my tripods that's it the Canon M50 guys from a camera amateur point of view it's priced reasonably. You can get this whole kit for about 650 quid. You can get very good quality photos, very good quality video, very good quality or decent quality audio in a very portable system. You can pick up extra batteries for not too much money. The batteries are in there, rechargeable. You slide out, you pop them in the charger, take a couple of hours to charge up or a bit less. You can buy another one, a proper one for about 20 quid. So all in all, this is an ideal camera for me hopefully and apart from the hatch issue i cannot find any any problems with it so far and usually when you buy a new bit of equipment i usually have a list of about 10 to 15 things that are frustrating the hell out of me you learn to live with or you try and solve and i've literally only got one issue with this which is pretty impressive so i'm really really happy guys that is the canon m50 let me know what camera you used let me know why um let me know what you think of the m50 as well because some of you know more about photography than me but from my point of view this is a fantastic little camera so far feels nice and solid and heavy as well not heavy as in it's gonna really weight you down but it just feels like it's well made it's not creaky like and plasticky like the dslr it feels a bit it feels a level above even though it's supposed to be an entry-level dslr so that's it guys thank you very much for watching and stay tuned to the forensics detailing channel do not forget to hit subscribe <laughs> see ya